The year is 2014, April. And Dogecoin, a new young cryptocurrency, is a mere months away from complete and utter collapse. Until Charlie Lee, the founder of Litecoin, steps in with an idea. An idea brought forward from Satoshi Nakamoto himself. An idea that would not only save Dogecoin, but change the relationship between Litecoin and Dogecoin forever. Dogecoin had a fatal flaw from the beginning. And the problem was this, within the first year of its cryptocurrency's existence, 95% of the coins would be mined by miners, leaving very little incentive for miners to continue to mine Dogecoin after the first year, unless the price went up dramatically, which for a young cryptocurrency would just be impossible. So then what would happen? Well, if they did nothing, the security of their network would be at risk because miners would shift off of it, leaving it very susceptible to a 51% attacks where a single entity can control the majority share of the network, leading to double spend attacks and just ultimately failure in security, whereas nobody would want to use it and it would fail. So there had to be some kind of solution. And that's where Charlie Lee went back to 2010, four years before. December 9th, Satoshi Nakamoto posts to Bitcoin Talk, a popular Bitcoin and cryptocurrency forum. Here, he introduces what we would now call merge mining, where miners could send their hash rate in parallel to two different cryptocurrencies, where their hashing power would be accepted by both networks. And in this case, you wouldn't need double the resources to mine, your same resources could send their hashing power to two different networks. So why was this being talked about in 2010? Well, we had our first altcoin called Namecoin, who ultimately failed at decentralization of domain names. But back then, everybody that was mining was mining Bitcoin. So why would anybody want to mine a new cryptocurrency? And if nobody shifted over to mine this new cryptocurrency, it would have no security on its network and ultimately never be able to get off the ground, just like a startup. So what happened here? Well, Namecoin was able to merge mine with Bitcoin for security. So as miners submitted hashing power to Bitcoin's network, that hashing power to solve blocks could also be accepted by Namecoin. And that way, it could get off the ground and have the security of the largest cryptocurrency network. Back to 2014, Charlie Lee makes the proposal for merge mining to the Dogecoin community. After much debate, it is finally accepted as the best way forward. And only a few months later, Dogecoin goes through a hard fork to allow hashing power being sent to the Litecoin network to be accepted on its own network. And ultimately, the rest is history. But how does merge mining work what are the requirements, and what happens when coins are merge mined. It's helpful to get a couple definitions out of the way to start. So in merge mining, there has to be two cryptocurrencies at minimum. The first is the parent cryptocurrency, and that's Litecoin in our example. The other is the auxiliary cryptocurrency, and that is Dogecoin in this example. Now the parent cryptocurrency actually doesn't have to do anything, and there's no impact to it at all. All of the work happens on the auxiliary cryptocurrency, Dogecoin. So it needs to have the same hashing algorithm as Litecoin, which, since it was a fork of Litecoin, it kept the same algorithm, which was script. Beyond that, it needs to just go through a hard fork so that the hashing power sent to the parent coin can also be accepted by the auxiliary coin, Dogecoin. And this is so brilliant because it's nothing but upside for miners who can now with the same hashing power mine two cryptocurrencies at once. As you're submitting your hash, if it's lower than the difficulty target on the Litecoin network, it could be accepted as a valid block there. Or if it's lower than the difficulty target on the Dogecoin network, it can be accepted as a valid block there, giving you multiple chances to win a block and be paid out on both networks at the same time. Now, a lot has happened in the 11 years since Dogecoin underwent the hard fork to save its network. In fact, so much has happened that Dogecoin has become the more profitable cryptocurrency to mine over Litecoin, leaving all of these script miners out there being called Dogecoin miners first and Litecoin miners second. In fact, let's break that down a little bit per day to see what's happening here. Let's start with Litecoin. The block reward for Litecoin is 6.25 and it has a block time of 2.5 minutes, meaning that there's 576 new Litecoin blocks created per day. And remember that each of those blocks has 6.25 Litecoin in them, meaning that per day, Litecoin is paying out 3,600 Litecoins to miners. Now let's figure out what that is in USD that Litecoin is paying miners to secure their network. 
as of making this video, the price of Litecoin is $75, meaning that that times the Litecoin paid out per day equals $270,000 that Litecoin is paying out to miners to secure its network. Let's take a look at Dogecoin in comparison. Dogecoin's block reward is 10,000 Doge per block, and its block time is much faster coming in at one minute, meaning that per day there are 1,440 new Dogecoin blocks created. Now remember, in each block is 10,000 Doge, meaning that per day there is 14.4 million new Dogecoin created and paid out to miners. Now let's figure out what that is in USD that Dogecoin is paying miners to secure its blockchain. The current price of Dogecoin making this video is 15 cents. That times the amount of Doge per day means that Dogecoin is paying out $2.16 million to miners to secure its network, meaning that the Dogecoin network is more secure than the Litecoin network that they latched onto to save them. Here's an example of a Litecoin miner that you can run right at your home. This is the Gold Shell Mini Doge 3. So it mines Litecoin and we all just learned because it does that, it also mines Dogecoin through merge mining. In fact, it mines quite a lot of other cryptocurrencies through merge mining as well because again, in all of those years, a bunch of other cryptos have jumped on the merge mining bandwagon for Litecoin and you can see all of them on the screen here. This is what else the Mini Doge 3 or any script miner can also mine. And ultimately, if you want to find a pool that supports merge mining, where you want to go is you want to go over to miningpoolstats.stream, which you can see right there lists all of the different um, merge mining coins that the pool will support. But I think there's ultimately two strategies for what to do with these other coins because there's questionable validity on some of these projects. I don't know if you want to hold them for the long term, you want to get rid of them, but let's take a look. So over on F2 pool, one of the options that you have here, if we go over to payout settings for my account, is in order to get paid out the merge mine coins, you do need to add an address in for each cryptocurrency network so it can pay out to that wallet. Now, if you do not want to hold some of these merge mine coins, I think via BTC has a really great option where they can do auto conversion to USDT. So let's go down and take a look. For example, Bell's coin here, that's a merge mine coin. If I don't want that, it will auto convert it to USDT for me. And that's Tether. And Tether is a one-to-one -one backed version of the US dollar on the blockchain. So you can have those auto converted over to Tether, throw that over to whatever exchange you use, convert it to USD or another cryptocurrency instead of holding all those merge bindable coins. If you're using one or the other strategy of those, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments section. I hope you learned something today just going through the history of cryptocurrency. If you did, let me know down in the comments section. And if you wanna keep learning, I have this really great video I had a lot of fun making where I calculate the actual odds of a small home miner winning a Bitcoin block. It was a lot of work, a lot of math went into it, but I hope you check out that video and I'll see you there if you do. Otherwise, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.